and welcome to Studio 5. We're going behind the scenes of a film all about truth, taking a deep dive into Marvel's What If series and eyeing the fabulous fashions in Disney's Cruella. But first, let's get right to the countdown of the five big stories in the world of uplifting entertainment. Here are the first two. At number five. And action. And I think this documentary is really the product of all of that thinking and prayer. The release of the seventh film from filmmakers Alex and Stephen Kendrick, a documentary called Show Me the Father. One of the greatest needs God has put into the heart of every human being is for a father. And it received a rare A-plus cinema score from moviegoers in its opening weekend. Don't drop the ball now, because it's not somebody else's responsibility to carry what you've been given. These are the filmmakers behind Facing the Giants, Fireproof, and War Room. This is the kind of film that families need to watch together. At number four. Encouraging news from actor Jeff Bridges, revealing his cancer is in remission. We learned about his lymphoma diagnosis almost a year ago. Bridges writing on his website that his once large tumor has shrunk to the size of a marble. Bridges also revealing that he caught COVID earlier this year, which required a five-week hospital stay and writes that the coronavirus hit him so hard the cancer was a piece of cake by comparison. That begins our countdown, and we will continue it throughout the rest of today's show. Right now, we have your Studio 5 first look at a new documentary, and it is rich with deep insight from some of today's best-known Christian leaders. It's called Nothing But The Truth, and two of the filmmakers are here to give us our first look. We'll be joined by John Sanders and Steve Wiggins. What is truth? Is there a universal truth? Is there something outside of our opinion? Where did this come from? What, what, what birthed the idea? Unraveling before us, and if anybody stands for truth, he looks today like he's bigoted. We're all supposed to get along. As I looked around in today's culture, I kept hearing everybody say to live your own truth. And that went against everything I was taught. It was love, and it's not loveless truth. Jesus said he was the truth and the life and the only way to heaven. But all of a sudden, I was living in a society and a culture that said, there's many roads that lead to God. There's many different truths out there. So we wanted to embark on a journey to uncover that question. Is truth absolute? Are there multiple truths? Or is there one truth? Y'all, I, I do not want my own truth because I don't trust me enough to have my own truth. And Steve, where does that journey begin in this filmmaking process? Well, I think the journey begins obviously with the Bible. Facts have to have foundations, okay? Uh, even scientific facts have to come back to scientific studies and a scientific method. But when it all comes down to the very basis of it all, you have to have something which is the truth. But boldly, what the truth of God is. So can there be truth and love together? Well, I don't think you can separate truth from love. I mean, the reality about love is, is that, is that God defines love. And that love is defined in, in the truth. Uh, you, you can't have true love without the truth of God's word as the foundation for defining what love is. The standard of biblical truth has been abandoned. Tell me about some of the voices inside the film and, and how you guys arrived at choosing them to, to do it. You know, it's interesting when you're doing a documentary and you're doing a documentary with a ministry that's been around for years, you have to be very careful. I think we've assembled a really wonderful cast of um, believers with influence and credibility to bring light different topics of the truth, the truth in finance, for example, is taught by Dave Ramsey. You know, the truth of the marriage is taught by Tony Evans. And he said some stuff about marriage I've never heard before. Really great insight from him. But we really tried to choose people whose walk match up to the word of the Lord and that could speak into different areas and whose walked match their talk, so to speak. When you wind up believing a lie and following a lie, you wind up living a lie. The diversity of the characters, and that's the beautiful thing about people who love the truth. It doesn't matter where you're from in the world. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter if you were born into privilege or whether you were born into poverty. The word of the Lord is the truth of the Lord. And you can meet up with people around the world 
who are Bible-believing Christians and living according to the Word, and there is that koinonia, you know, there is that spirit connection that you have with those people. And to me, in a, in a world really where the media oftentimes, uh, it seems that, you know, they like to use the divisions in order to cause a story. To me, one of the greatest stories of this film is how there's great division with respect to diversity uh, of all the ways that I, you know, have talked about. And yet at the very same time, there's complete unity over the word of the Lord. Steve, what's your hope for the project as it is released? My hope is that uh, first and foremost, that it'll energize the church. You know, the Bible says that judgment begins in the house of the Lord, but revival begins there too. And, you know, I'd like to see the people in the church first and foremost, repaired to the word of the Lord so that they would be whom the Lord calls his people to be. And then once they are repaired to the, to the Lord, then see them go out into the world and be active. Stand up for Christ and witness to this world of his grace. God does not command that the world go to church. He commands that the church go to the world. We will be civil, but we won't be silent. If we only had 10% of the Christians, the people who call themselves Christians in America today, and all 10% were on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ, we'd change this nation. Nothing But The Truth is available right now on DVD and digital platforms. Coming up next. I'm Jeffrey Wright, and as the voice of the Watcher in Marvel's What If, I can see what few others can. And he's helping to take us in Studio 5 behind the scenes of the animated series posing alternative plots to the pivotal Marvel Universe moments. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep as the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. At number three. But sometimes, the magic finds us. Look at you. Don't go, Casey. So cute. I'm so red. How big is he going to get? That depends, doesn't it? On what? On how much you love him. It's a Studio 5 first look at Paramount's big screen adaptation of the beloved children's book series, Clifford the Big Red Dog. Though its September release is still being pushed back, because of pandemic and Delta variant concerns. I wish we were big and strong and the world couldn't hurt us. Uh. <laughs> Clifford? At number two. The Sony studio stage where Alex Trebek hosted Jeopardy for decades. It will now forever be known as the Alex Trebek stage. 
the show making that announcement during last night's season premiere. And the countdown continues with number one coming up a little bit later in today's show. In case you've been missing it, we're actually right now in the middle of regular releases for Marvel's What If. That's the animated series that poses alternative scenarios to pivotal Marvel Cinematic Universe moments. It's a nine episode series being released to rave reviews. Take a look. Yeah, peace, I love peace. I'd be out of a job with peace. Do we know each other? Time. Reality. Reality. It's changeable. Where you want to be? That's the question, isn't it? Every universe is different. Each one unique. Slow down a little bit. There's a few people in the room that don't understand. Not me, I, I get it. Reality is not a straight line. Every passing moment is a chance for a new offshoot, a new variation. In fact, there are more realities than you can possibly fathom. An infinite number of what ifs. I'm Jeffrey Wright, and as the voice of the Watcher in Marvel's What If, I can see what few others can. The totality of the multiverse across all time and space. The stories you thought you knew are nothing like you remember. Familiar faces. Who are you? In unfamiliar roles. Stalo! Women aren't soldiers. Howard, get ready. Agent Carter. No one expected. And foes who became friends. Follow me. Enter the multiverse of infinite possibilities. Where the stories you thought you knew are nothing like you remember. This is our only chance. Red Skull wants to destroy our world. I say, we return the favor. Wow, I did not see that coming. Who are you? The name's Captain Carter. Shaisa. I am the Watcher. But I do not, cannot, will not interfere. I guess I have to freestyle then. Hey! We have you out of bird. A ravager never flies solo. I said never flies solo. Uh, is that some kind of catchphrase? <laughs> You had me worried for a second. Journey to face the unknown and ponder the question, what if? The nine episode series is streaming right now on Disney Plus. And as we've shared before, Chadwick Boseman does make an appearance in the series, perhaps his final role. We turn now from animation to photography. We love sharing stories and pictures. And here's this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. We take you east to New York City for this year's Met Gala. It was held Monday at its usual location, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, though it's typically held on the first Monday in May, postponed this year because of COVID-19. Often called fashion's biggest night, we're sharing some of the hits and misses from the evening. And they are this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Still ahead and continuing in the world of fashion. We are hashtag blessed to wear the brilliant designs of Academy Award winning designer Jenny Bevan and her incredible team. We're taking a look at a unique bright spot from Disney's hit Cruella. 
And that's the film's fashion. I loved this outfit. We were in Liberty, which is sort of iconic fashion store in London. Most important thing about that day was I ordered in donuts. A look at that sweet style is coming up next. just depends on your definition of when life begins. Watch Dan and Dale tackle trending topics that test your faith on the next Faith Wire. Monday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. The Global Lane takes you around the world providing facts over fiction. What might rising trade and geopolitical tensions mean for you on the home front? With over 45 years of experience, award-winning journalist Gary Lane brings you the truth from a global angle. What about the issue of immigration? World news analysis you won't see anywhere else. And it's all right here on the Global Lane. Thursday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Welcome back to Studio 5. Disney's Cruella was a successful release earlier this year, and with it now coming to other platforms, we have a unique feature to share this week. You could call it a bright spot from the movie, and that's the film's fashion. I'm Cruella. Hear me roll. In our new film, Cruella, we are hashtag blessed to wear the brilliant designs of Academy Award-winning designer Jenny Bevan and her incredible team. There are so many beautiful outfits in this film, so let's revisit them, shall we? I loved this outfit. We were in Liberty, which is sort of iconic fashion store in London. Most important thing about that day was I ordered in donuts. Um, obviously, which I didn't eat because I couldn't get into anything because I was wearing a corset. Stella finds this red dress in the window, and it's an old Baroness collection dress. She reworks it herself, which is a pretty pivotal moment because it is the first time she's stepped out as Cruella. This mask on my face, it was crystals glued on and feathers glued on, so it took a very long time to do. And this one is the sort of Marie Antoinette. The wig was two feet high and quite heavy. Naomi created it and worked on it all night, pinning ribbons to it. And then accidentally, we didn't even realize that she'd put ribbons on the wig and that um, Jenny had put ribbons on the dress and they echoed each other. And then I got to sit in a swing and be lowered to and from. This is when Estella really morphs into Cruella. It's obviously a kind of leather, shiny leather, and this sort of checkerboard on, down the sleeves and on skirt, and these amazing gloves, and it's also one of my favorite hairstyles. Then this one, I'm in a corset, I'm in a wig that's literally this high, and heels that are that high. I've got a champagne glass in one hand and three Dalmatians in the other, and I have to go down the stairs. I said I'm gonna fall over, and I fell over. <laughs> Uh-oh, that's not gonna be easy, you guys. This is unbelievably cool. It's a kind of military jacket that has all of these little soldiers and toys on the shoulders, and it was this enormous skirt designed for me to swish it around and cover an entire car. I did not execute that perfectly, because apparently I don't have the strength to swish a skirt over a car. 
When there's the black and white ball, all of these extraordinary creations I wore for such a short time. I wish I owned them all, but I would need to buy a new house. Ah, yes, my very favorite. This is the garbage dress. This is my this is my favorite look of the film. The skirt is insanely long. It wasn't attached to the dress because I couldn't walk anywhere or sit in a car or do anything with all of that. So they attached this long train to me when I got onto the garbage truck and rode away. It was really special and I was incredibly excited to wear this. this they worked on this for such a long time. What a wonderful walk down memory lane. Just wild. I want to make art. I'm just getting started, darling. Cruella releases to digital Blu-ray and DVD next week. That is September 21st, 2021. With that, we have made it to the final story in this week's countdown of the best in uplifting entertainment. Here is your number one from Studio 5. At number one. Well, hello, everybody. Hi, All eyes are on actress Jessica Chastain on the cover of the latest edition of Relevant Magazine for championing the long journey to bring the story of Tammy Faye Baker to the big screen. When I watched the documentary, actually, I got to know her as someone who believed that everyone is deserving of love without judgment. And I thought, oh my gosh, why hasn't anyone ever made this film and told her story? The Eyes of Tammy Faye is in theaters this Friday, September 17th. It was the best part I've ever played and it was great fun to kind of sink my teeth into it. Hallelujah. Oh yeah. Are you suffering from feeling tired or worn out during the day? Can you not turn off your brain at night? You are not alone. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, the Sleep Doctor, and I've partnered with the Christian Broadcasting Network, and we're gonna bring you some unbelievable information that you can use tonight to get a better night's rest. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com to get your free copy of Protect Your Sleep today. Nutrition, exercise, essential oils, weight loss, and more. It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN health reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living Tuesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Superbook fans, here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> it's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! Come and... Uh, sorry, pardon me. Sorry, excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon. It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. Highlight your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary. Or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible. All in one place. The CBN Bible, available at cbn.com Bible or the iTunes App Store. Welcome back to Studio 5. We've got a great soundtrack to share this week. It's Travis Green and Anthony Hamilton. Take a listen and hear why oil and water is what's playing in my ear this week.
that musical note, we are almost out of time for today's Studio 5. But before we go, we'd like to share what you can look forward to when you join us next week. My singing voice has always been my guardian angel. Actress Cynthia Erivo has been busy since we last saw her playing the role of Aretha Franklin. And by the way, that's earned her another chance to take home an Emmy. You have uh, an album coming and a children's book. Yes. <laughs> We're talking with her about that book. I've had ghosts of my past come back to greet me, big white smiles in their eyes. And that very first I album. The album I, I was writing, um, I think one of the songs is almost seven years old. Please make time to join us for that story and so much more next week. As for this week, we want to give the final word to two of the voices behind the film Nothing But The Truth, John Sanders and Steve Wiggins. If you could go back in time in light of all that you know today and where we sit, what advice would you give young John and Steve? What advice would you give young Steve? I guess the advice, you know, as I look back on it, um, a lot of times people go back and would give themselves something that says do something different. The biggest thing that I would do different is to start earlier, start more passionately with my walk and faith with Christ. And I fell back on some truths my dad taught me is that God doesn't lie, and that truth is contained in the Word of God. So this would probably be one of the best things I could share is what Adrian Rogers said, is you better get a bulldog grip on the Word of God. Man, that's great. I think if I could go back and tell myself uh, something like a, a sort of a mercy me, dear younger me kind of a moment, right? What a great song. I would hammer home the simple truth that we that we tell children, you know, it's one of the first Bible verses that I remember my kids memorizing, you know, Proverbs uh, 3, 5 through 7, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. And I think uh, if we can realize that the word of the Lord is where we need to place uh, our foundation, then... Uh, then I don't think that we have a problem at that point with, uh, with whichever way that it is that he leads us. And thank you so much, gentlemen. That is a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you and then come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching.